All right, welcome back to Lane Switching. Today I have my guest, none other than Carver. Again, glad to be here. Welcome to the Whip, my G. I'm really happy to have you here. Um, let's just start off. Uh, tell us a little bit about your upbringing and uh, life before Amigo. Uh, well, I came to Canada like around 2006 with my family. I have like a brother, two sis, two older sisters. I'm the, I'm the youngest side of the three. Um, you know, we just uh, my brother actually started music. My brother actually started music first. And um, he t he told me here and there to you know, do cop in the stool, and all and all that other stuff. But I really never took it serious. And then it's when until I got into high school, there's other kids making music like around me, and then we'd go to my friend's house, and like we would just record, and just you know fuck around with it and shit. But I never took it as serious then, you know. I made a couple of tracks. They weren't they weren't even sounding that good, you know. Yeah. And then um, and yeah, COVID came and then. Other my other friends actually started dropping and shit, and I'm like maybe I should try you know. And I started getting better because over COVID I was just writing, writing, writing in my room because you know there's nothing to do. Yeah. And then the they let us out again, and then hit the stool, and I recorded my first track, Boss, and then from then I just dropped it and yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So when exactly did you start making music, and why do you make music? Uh, I started about two years ago, and. I, I like since I was a kid, I always like I always wanted to be in like some type of entertainment, you know. I want to entertain people, you know, even if it was like acting or modeling or just being out there, you know. And not only that, I'm like I'm a big fan of like pop music, anything. I listen to anything, and yeah, I just I just want to be a superstar, you know. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. So, who have you actually you been listening to lately? Um, as right now. My favorite artist is Doovy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He inspires me a lot, you know? But um, Doovy, Big Scar, I fuck with him a lot. Oh, yeah, he's fire. Big Scar and um, ESTG, Northside Benji, and uh, who else? 42 Doug, yeah. Yeah, that's a sick list. Doovy's actually coming to Ottawa, I think, at the end of the month. Oh, yeah, for the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, speaking about shows, I actually saw you for the first time. It was at, uh, you opened for 3M French. Kind of tell us a little bit how that experience was and just, yeah. do you, how, like, what is, like, do you enjoy, uh, doing the live performances? Yeah, that was, that was my first ever performance, you know? It was really, um, it was kind of nerve wracking because, you know, I never performed in front of a bunch of people, but I had Mesco with me and Young Bossa and, uh, well, Smiley was on the stage too. So, you know, it made him, I felt more comfortable. Well, we got on and then we had, we had, we had our supporters on this, uh, in the crowd too. So like, you know, they made it live for us. The crowd was good, you know? Yeah. It's a fun experience. I, I'll for sure do it again. Yeah. It, it, it was sick. So, um, you're actually a part of the group BPS. Mm. So, um, who are the members and as a collective, like what's your future plans for releasing music? Uh, it's right now it's me. Uh, Young Bossa, Smiley, and uh, there's other there's other people in the group, but oh, and Slizzy, Slizzy, and uh, there's other people in the group, but they're not like um, they don't really rap, but not like, the entertainment. Yeah, yeah, but Business. like they're still with us, you know. And um, right now we're just trying to build our brand, get it out there more, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep pushing, releasing music, and eventually we could even have that name out there, you know. Yeah, for sure. and obviously these are all like Southside Ottawa guys, and you yourself, you know, spending a lot of time of your youth in the Southside. How do you feel? Uh, has it influenced your sound and just how you are as an artist growing up out here? Being a being in this neighborhood in general, like it impacted me a lot, cause like in my music I rap about you know where I'm from and all that stuff, and um, like just just being just just being like um in the hood and shit uh help uh, help me help me like you know like grow as a person and see like how everybody's been i don't even know how to say this properly <laughs> but you kind of have to mature like quicker yeah basically basically yeah. and because of that like that can force you to because you mature quicker i think a lot of people they have to take a lot of time they take a lot of time to find their sound yeah. whereas when you're trying to make it out, like, it it goes quick. Yeah. And you got to be quick with it. I'm still trying to find my sound. Like, I always try different type of styles right now. 
So actually, speaking about that, is there any other genres outside of hip-hop that you'd be interested in making music? R&B, maybe. Because people tell me I have the voice, you know, to actually sing, sing. But for sure, I'm trying to I'm trying to mix my sound with R&B, not just mm-hmm. like hardcore rap. I'm trying to mix it. Yeah. Do something different with it. And do you enjoy making melodic more than, I feel like a lot of people ask this, but melodic more than like your club bangers or whatever? Yeah, I'd rather do melodic way better. Yeah. It do some sick show my voice, you know? Yeah, for sure. You actually recently went out to the United States for business. And uh, how was that experience? And uh, has it made you look at the music industry a little differently? Yeah, it was really fun. Shout out to J. Creole, you know? He actually, um, he sees the potential in me, you know? Yeah. He grabbed he grabbed me and um, KGJ and Chevy. He took us out there. We made a couple of videos, went to the studio, you know, networking, all that stuff. And yeah, me being out there, like, I just realized, like, from from being out there and, like, looking out here, it's so much different, you know? Like, uh, just the environment and, like, the industry and all that stuff. Like, I learned so much more. Yeah, and there is just so much more money out in the entertainment in the United States that even if you feel you're not getting, you're hitting your stride out in your own hometown, it's okay to leave for a bit and yeah. try other things, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's completely different. Big time. So... What inspires you to make music? At first, like, um, I watch a... This is how I was saying, like, Doovy and all that stuff. I watched him, like, from literally when he started. And, like, where he is now is, like, crazy to me, you know? Like, it makes me want to be like him, like, motivate myself to be better than him, actually, you know? So, like, whenever whenever I just see people winning and stuff, like, that motivates me, you know? I'm like, oh, he's doing that. I could do that better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's always my mentality. Yeah, it's competition, yeah. but it's not like you want him to fail. It's just yeah, you know. know you can just do it just as I well. I could do it, yeah. If he could do it, I could do it, you know? Exactly. And you've actually already started um, collabing with people out of town. You collabed with uh, G. Faisal, who's from Montreal, yeah. on you know one of your hit songs, Beamer. Um, how important do you think it is to collab outside of the city? And do you think you could make it, even if you were just collabing with local guys? Yeah, um... Uh, collab with other people in other cities is, to be honest, especially like t- like Toronto and stuff. It's I I fuck with it because you know not only that uh, Toronto people can know like you know Ottawa's actually rapping because us we're a very low key, very low key city. You know, not that I don't even think that much Toronto artists or just in general all of Canada. I don't think they know there's a couple other artists you know popping off and stuff. You know, so us getting features or just collabing is really good, especially how Toronto is like. Well, isn't it like the like the scene of auto rap for like Canadian rap right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. big time. And it's just, you look at population, obviously, as well. It's just Toronto not only has 6 million, but they also have the GTA. Yeah. So Ottawa doesn't really have that where we don't have a surrounding area that has a lot of other kids who are going to, you know, listen to your music. And they have Drake too. Yeah. Like, it's actually <laughs> the goal. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's, that's a huge boost. And not only just Drake, but also the Raptors. There's just yeah. so much to do. There's a, such a nightlife out in Toronto that it just, you know, it pairs perfectly with the music. Yeah. If we can get that main artist or just any artist to blow up, put everybody in the other artists on in the city, then, you know. Yeah. And it's possible. For sure. And I think as well is something is like a lot of guys who come out of Ottawa, or it doesn't really matter any of their hometown. They ride for their hometown heavy. But I think it's okay to move away and not have the burden of you to have to lift the entire city. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you can do it either as a collective or kind of, Work on your own personal career and then come back to the city when you're more established to boost yeah. it. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put everybody on, you know. Me, I fuck with everybody's music, you know. But if you know, if, if you don't fuck with me, then it is what it is, you know. Like, yeah. Exactly. So speaking about collabs, who would you, and again, not even just Ottawa, just who would you like to collab with in the future? Like and any artist? Any artist. Uh, obviously, definitely Doovy, sure. uh, Big Scar, uh... In Ottawa right now, I'm trying to do a collab with Loki Guapo. Probably do a couple of features with the other Southsiders, like Chevy. And uh, yeah, I think that's it right now. You actually already dropped a pretty notable song with uh, Chevy and uh, OTG Siffy, Southside Simplified. How did that whole uh, song come together? That... Well, basically, um, uh, Stiffy, OTG Siffy. Yeah. He basically um won the Go Vision like I don't know if you know Go Vision does like these raffle things 
where if you win, you can win like a free studio session, free music video, or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it's for, and the day before that, I actually met him the first time in the studio. He was telling me, "Oh, we should cook up and drop some, you know." And so, you know, luckily he won that thing. For sure. And then he told Chevy to hop on, and then we went to the studio, we recorded, it, and next thing you know, we shot the video for it. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. So whether it's your style of rapping or you know what I mean, whatever your overall style, what makes you stand out in comparison not even just local in comparison to other rappers what makes carver different than other people in the scene i guess because my i'm more of like a squeaky type of rapper you know and like um my bars are different like i don't know if you realize like when i'm doing like a chorus or whatever like i make sure it's catchy yeah you know yeah, i stick to that and then yeah i just try i try to i try to make try to make my i, tr I always try to make a banger you know yeah so when you're putting together a song what is your creative process putting a song oh uh, well i just i just try to um it honestly just depends on my mood and everything yeah that's you know yeah so we're getting near like probably the last quarter of uh 2022 going into 2023 what can we expect from you for the rest of this year and uh next year oh uh, this year i'm really trying to pop off those videos i shot in um in the u.s i'm gonna start dropping them um i'm gonna start i'm gonna start doing more shows and yeah i'm gonna just i'm gonna just be more consistent now because i've ghosted for a while i haven't dropped anything since uh beamer and yeah i'm gonna come back real strong do you think the most important thing when it comes to music is consistency or is it um just honing your craft and being better at rapping i think it's consistency because you can if you just keep dropping more people are going to see you and like push and show other people and if you just go for a while like you know they're going to forget about you yeah. and do you feel like it's better to drop um numerous singles or build up to at some point dropping a project whether it's a mixtape ep or album uh, i feel like singles in my opinion, right now, I'm just trying to drop singles until I get that, like, big hype. Like, not even just have to be worldwide, just, like, have that name. That's when I'm going to start dropping an album, maybe, you know? For sure, for sure. So, where can people find you on social media and where can people listen to your music? Uh, You can find me on Instagram, Snapchat. My Instagram is Carver underscore TP. Same thing with my Snapchat. And I'm also on Twitter, too. Same thing, Carver underscore TP. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. So, that was our interview with Carver. Shout out to Carver for coming okay. on. Appreciate Respect, it, man. Bro. That was Lane Switching. I'm DF2. That's Carver. Peace.